today i wish to consider objective style question on dissolution of a partnership firm observe this sum on the screen state whether the following statements are true or false correct the false statement with proper explanation look at the first statement when a single partner of a firm retires the firm gets dissolved now when partnership firm gets dissolved assets are realized liabilities are settled profit or loss on realization of asset and settlement of liabilities worked out undistributed profit and this realization profit is distributed amongst partners redeemable capital of the partner is worked out and partners capital is ready this is what occurs in a dissolution of a firm but when only one partner retires the firm is not dissolved the firm its business is continued but by retirement what happens the changes in the relationship of partnership comes into existence so by retirement also this statement is false retirement dissolves the existing partnership relationship that is the relationship between partners changes because of retirement but not the partnership firm so partnership firm is not dissolved and you have stated that the partnership firm is dissolved that's why this statement is false next court can interfere with regards to any matter of dissolution of a partnership firm now court can interfere the dissolution process answer is yes or no so yes court can do it the statement is true because court the purpose of court or the purpose of legal system is to see that the third parties are not adversely affected by the conduct of dissolution second the terms and conditions of partnership agreement are adhered to between the partners so it is a matter of justice and for which court can intervene in case of dissolution of a partnership firm so this statement is true next to pay liabilities of a partnership firm the personal assets of the partner cannot be used now see this statement says that the partner is liable only to the extent of capital contributed by him in the firm no it's not so because the liability of a partnership firm is unlimited so this statement is false unlimited liability of a partner implies that the personal assets can be utilized for paying the debts of the partnership firm so if the firm assets are insufficient to pay its obligations partners are required to contribute from their personal assets to meet with the liabilities of the firm this is the implication of unlimited liability so this statement says that the personal assets cannot be used for payment of liabilities of the firm is false this statement is against the basic convict basic principle that the liability of a partnership firm is unlimited next the loan of partner's wife from the woman's personal wealth or possession is paid prior to any payment towards the third party liability now see this statement is false first of all now loan of a partner's wife the wife of a partner has given a loan to the partnership firm 
out of her stridhana. What is stridhana? The amount received by a female at the occasion of her marriage, which is known as kanyana, that amount is known as stridhana. The other thing, pallu, is also known as stridhana. They are the terminology of Hindu law. So, this is known as stridhana which is an independent property of a female and if the loan is given out of that funds to the firm she ranks very basu she ranks at par with third party liability but she can't claim priority over the third party so this statement is false notice the answer partner's wife's loan given from woman's personal wealth that is known as Tritana is to be paid along with and at par with all third party unsecured liability. So all third party unsecured liability and loan from Stritan are ranked at par. They are paid with parity. They are paid peri paso. So at par with all other third party unsecured liability. But the loan from Stritan cannot claim priority towards the third party liability. While this statement mentions the priority of such loan, the statement mentions the priority of such loan against the third party liability, which is not true. Next. In a partnership firm, the liabilities of all partners are confined to their capital only. Once again, the liability of a partnership firm is unlimited, not confined to only capital contributed by the partner in the firm. So this statement is false. The liability of a partner is unlimited, implies not confined to the capital only. If the assets of the firm are not sufficient to pay its liabilities. Partners are required to contribute to the firm to make payment of such liabilities. So liability of a partner is not just confined to the capital contributed by him in the firm, but it's beyond that. And the li liability of all the partners is joint and several. Joint and several. They are jointly liable as well as they are personally liable. That's the implication. Next. Workman Accident Compensation Fund is distributed amongst partners in a profit and loss sharing ratio. Yes, this statement is true provided. No suit, no liability for compensation is pending. So we presume that no liability is pending against this fund. In that situation, it can be distributed amongst partners in the ratio of profit sharing. So this statement is true. Parkman Accident Compensation Fund is, a, is distributed amongst partners in their profit and loss sharing ratio. If no claim is pending, they are against. If no claim is pending, means the entire compensation fund is without any liability element. If it is without liability element, it can be distributed amongst partners in the profit sharing ratio because it is an undistributed profit. At the time of dissolution of a partnership firm, unrecorded contingent liability is paid off by debiting the realization account. Now, unrecorded contingent liability has to be paid. When you pay it, what happens? It increases. The losses, it increases. The amount available for distribution to the partners at the time of dissolution. So, this statement is true. This, un this contingent liability is an unrecorded liability. If it is paid, it is known as increasing liability. It is just identified alike to loss and it can be debited to realization account. The statement is true. Observe this sign. 
the status of debtors at the time of dissolution goes as follows: status plus penalties of ninety thousand appears in the balance sheet asset side. During the dissolution, the accounting treatment of debtors will be given at the debit side of realization account ninety thousand. Now, when we are transferring assets to the debit side of realization account, we write the book value of asset. Here the book value of debtors is one lakh. Bad debt reserve is a reserve against the asset. Ninety thousand is not the balance of debtors account. The balance of debtors account is one lakh. Book value of debtors is one lakh. So we have to transfer one lakh rupees to the debit side of realization account, and ten thousand reserve against it is to be credited to realization account. We can't debit net amount ninety thousand to the debit side of realization account. That we cannot. So this statement is false that you can debit ninety thousand to realization account. That statement is false. How should it be recorded? Debtors are debited to the realization account. Bad debt reserve is to be credited to realization account. And remember, this is the explanation. The book value of the asset is debited to realization account. Reserve against asset is credited to the realization account. Asset net of reserve. Cannot be debited to realization account. This is how it should be accounted for. So the statement is false. Next, the dissolution expense of the firm is to be paid by the firm. I'm sorry. The dissolution expenses of the firm is to be paid by the firm itself. But if it is paid by a partner, no accounting treatment. Is required to record in the books. Now see, dissolution expense, the expense of the firm to be borne by the firm. The expense to be borne by the firm, the expense that is to be shouldered by the firm, has to be paid by the firm. But suppose that by chance, if that expense is paid by a partner, then partner is paying the expenses on behalf of the firm. Partner is a giver, credit the giver. So partner's capital account is to be credited. And this dissolution expense being expense, it should be debited to realization account. So the correct entry for that is realization account debit to partner's capital account. Instead of that, he says that no accounting treatment is required to record this transaction in the books is false. Notice it. This statement is false. Dissolution expenses are not borne by the partner, but are paid on behalf of the firm. Hence. Realization account is debited and partner's capital account is credited for recording the transaction in the books. This is how it should be recorded. So the statement is false. Next, bad debt recovery is not required to be recorded in the books. Now, bad debt recovery is not required to be recorded. It is not not required to be recorded in the books. No, the statement is false. How the statement is false? Bad debt recovery is a recovery of loss, hence treated as gain. Bad debt recovery is a recovery of loss, hence it should be treated as gain. And gains have to be recorded. We have received cash there against, so cash account debit to realization account credit is the accounting entry required for this type of transactions. So cash account is debited and realization account is credited for that. This is how. The accounting entry has to be passed. Now, these are the ten statements that you have considered. I feel that you have followed them. Thanks to all of you.